Well, good morning, everyone. Truly, the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. For all day, all night, the angels keep watching over me. You know, I woke up at 3.30 this morning. My mind on the Lord. I had a dream about an invasion, how the enemy were Indians and they were invading this one country. But there was an archer, a man who was skilled in archery. And when the enemy was opposing, he, he never missed his target until this one particular moment. He launched his arrow, and the arrow missed the target. So the man ran and hid in fear. And the people who trusted and depended on him became vulnerable and began to run and hide from the opposing force. And it just, in my spirit, it stirred me up this morning to where I began to meditate in God's word today. And the Lord reminded me of John chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. It doesn't matter what the enemy has plotted, has planned, has threatened you with, his weapons will not prosper. God wants us to know, my brothers and sisters, today that you are victorious through Jesus Christ our Lord. If he is the shepherd and he leads you out to the pastures of comfort, the pastures of security, the pastures of provision. There is no reason we need to fear the enemy because the Lord is on your side. If he's on your side, he's more than the world against you. You are victorious, my brother and sister, and I just want to encourage you this morning on this tremendous Tuesday morning to know that God is on your side today. The devil is a liar. Jesus Christ is Lord. He has conquered all of our foes. He said, but he that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. There's a pathway that leads to the shepherd. But you must desire to want to enter into that sheepfold. And what Jesus is talking about, those who are followers of his, those who claim him as their Lord and their Savior, he has provided the opportunity for you to come in the right way. We must come to the Lord correct. We must come through the door. There is no way around the Lord. As we embrace this Thanksgiving season, we must re be reminded of those who are less fortunate than we are and be begin to pray and begin to intercede for those who are hurting, those who are wounded, those who are bruised, and allow the Spirit of God to fill your heart with compassion that you can begin to share what you have with others who don't have what you have. So I want to enter into prayer this morning. He says, verily, verily, pay attention. Listen, listen, look, look. I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, is a thief and a robber. Are you a thief and a robber today? Are you a follower of the Savior? One who has your, your hope, your security, your dependency upon the Lord. 
So, Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus, I come, Lord God, saying thank you. Thank you for your blessed hope we have in you, God. Thank you for your security that you protect and keep us, O God, in the midst of danger seen unseen all night, all day. The angels of the Lord keeps watching over me. Father, we know that if it had not been for your presence, we would have been consumed by the enemy. You allowed us, Father God, to wake up another day, clothed in our right minds, and have the activity of our limbs and able to function because of your goodness. You told death to behave itself and pass our doorways. When the deaf angel could have entered in, yet God, you saw fit to give us another opportunity to be a witness for you. And this morning, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I come asking you to forgive us, God, for our sins of iniquity. Forgive us for our wickedness. Forgive us for our unrighteousness. Blot out our transgressions. Reprove us of our sins. Purify our thoughts and our actions. As we woke up this morning, on this Tuesday morning, God, we thank you, Lord God, for thinking about us, God, for always having us on your mind. You keep showing us mercy and compassion. You allowed your grace that was poured out for all mankind to give us the opportunity to come boldly before the throne of the living God that we can obtain mercy and help in the time of need. And Father, my heart goes out for those who are grieving in this season, God. Just yesterday, Father, found out one of my neighbor's children were killed in an automobile accident. It just troubles my heart, God, with this reckless driving in our city, God, how people just don't care about one another anymore, Father God, to where it don't, don't, doesn't matter to them who they violate or who they hurt, God. But Father, my heart cries out this morning, God, that you will begin to draw your people back to the place of solitary, back to the place of consecration, back to the place of seeking your face, God, because without you, God, we can do nothing. But with you, Lord God, all things are possible to us who believe. If we can see the invisible, we can do the impossible because God is with us. And because you're with us, God, you said the prayers, oh God, hallelujah, of a righteous man avail as much. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I come boldly before your throne today, God, pleading to you, God, to extend your mercy, God. We need you in such perilous times, oh God, because men are becoming lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasures and not of God. Because the hearts of men are turning cold, Father, your word tells us they're waxing cold in the last days, turning from the truth. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, draw us back to you where nothing else in this world would matter. Father, we need you. We need you more than we ever needed you before, God, because of the sin tornado, God. It's sweeping through the land and the country, God, and it's consuming whoever gets in his pathway. And nevertheless, God, you're still greater than the tornadoes and the storms and the winds in our lives. You are greater, God, because you are the greater one who lives inside of us. Father God, help our unbelief. Help us to come back to the place where we begin to seek your face, O oh God. Turn from our wicked ways, O oh God. Begin to cry out unto God again, Father, that we would not be consumed in the things of this world. The 
word tells us, Father, that the grace of God appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust and to live godly and sober before God and man. Father, you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, and you taught, told us, Father, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who you call out of darkness into your marvelous light. Father, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as our hearts are being turned back to you, God. Cleanse our minds, oh God. Break the strongholds off our minds. Break that haughty and foul spirit off our minds, oh God. That pride and stubborn and stiff-necked ways, oh God. Break it off our minds, oh God. That our minds will be, Father, purified by the word of God. Cleanse from a dead conscience. Lord, we need you. Many have lost their lives in this season of this year, God. Because of the pandemic, many have lost their lives, oh God. Loved ones are bound in, 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 in place of isolation and can't even come near their relatives, God, because of their conditions. People don't care, Father God, about the disease in the land, Father, they're not wearing their protective gear, Father God, to arm themselves against this disease because of foolishness, God. The heart of man is foolish, but yet, God, you called us to be people of wisdom, people of knowledge, people of understanding, but yet, Father God, we're so foolish. You said the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it save God? Father, wash us clean. Give us common sense. Give your people common sense to seek the Lord, Father God, for your wisdom and your truth, O oh God, and also operate in common sense, O oh God. Because without you, Lord God, we're hopeless. Without you, Lord God, we would perish. Without you, Lord God, there's no reason for living. And God, we're crying out to you in this season, God, that you turn the tables, God, in our lives. Turn our hearts back to the Father. Turn our lives back to you, God, that nothing else would matter but serving you with a new heart, new mind, and a new spirit, yielding ourselves to you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, be glorified, be exalted, be lifted up, O oh God, in the midst of us today. Father, we need you. We need you. We need you, Lord God. We need you, Father God, in our churches. We need you in our communities. We need you in our nation. We need you in our cities, God. We need you, Father God, to begin to rain down upon every heart the fire of God. Father, to stir us up, to burn us up on the inside so we're not compromised with the worldly things anymore, God. But we find our true satisfaction in serving you, God. Father, draw us close to you. Never let us go. We lay it on down again just to hear you call us your friend. You are our desire. No one else would do. Father, draw us close to you today, God. This is our cry, God, that you draw us close to you, God. Draw us back to the fountains of living waters. Draw us back, oh God, to the fountains of living waters where we can come and drink from the rivers of life, oh God, and find our true satisfaction in you, God. Satan, you losing the battle. You lost the battle. You have no authority. 
You have no right. And we bind you up in the name of Jesus. You and your cohorts that's come to attack the people of God. We bind you up in the name of Jesus. Your cancerous disease. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. Your foul spirit. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. Every attack, every sickness, every disease. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. And send it back to the pit of hell was it come from. Father, every back pain, every arthritis attack, every diabetic attack. Father, God, every, every, Father God, uh, sickle cell, Father God, leukemia, Father God, all these different diseases, God. AIDS virus, oh God. HIV, oh God. Brain tumors, God. Colon cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, God. Lung cancer, God. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. Father, your people need your healing, God, today. Release that balm of Gilead. Release the balm of Gilead, the anointing salve of the Holy Spirit to heal and deliver, God. Right now, release your anointing, God, to break the yokes of sickness, God, off the lives of your people, God. Mental torment, heart conditions, God. Joint pains, back pains, oh God. Father, people are suffering all around the land and the country, God. Poverty and lack, oh God. Those, Father God, living in the streets, oh God, don't have a shelter, God. Father, some by choice and some not by choice, God. Some because they lost their jobs, oh God, lost their finances, God. But nevertheless, God, release your anointing, God. Touch the lives of your people in leadership, God, to reach the communities, to meet the needs of your people, God. Because you said, Father, in your word, when we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, that all things shall be added to us, God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, release your benefits. Release, Father, your resources. Release your financial provisions, God. Release your healing hand, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, release it, God, from the anointing to meet your people right where they are, God. We're crying out, God, as we come together in one accord, oh God, to seek your face, oh God. We're crying out, oh God, that change would take place in our lives, oh God that the people of God will begin to cry out, to weep and mourn, to break up the fallow grounds, return to the Lord their God and seek your face, O oh God, while you're able to be found. And I thank you, Lord God, that you hear our cry and you answer us, God, according to your will. Let it be done, God. Let it be done, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I pray that you have a wonderful, a blessed, and glorious day in the Lord. And remember... Love is an action word. It's not just a spoken word. It's an action word. So go out there and demonstrate the love of Christ. If you say you love God, then love your brother. If you say you love God, forgive your brother. If you say you love God, demonstrate it by your life today. And allow the word of God that's been spoken into your heart to manifest through you today to somebody else who needs the Lord. Because we're living in a time where Christ is soon to come. Will you be ready to meet him? Or will he deny you when you come into his presence? So God bless you on today. And I pray that this blesses you 
that it encourages you, that it strengthens you, and that it empowers you. Because prayer is what's needed in our communities. Prayer is what's needed in our cities. Prayer is what's needed in our lives. We must seek the Lord daily. Not sometime, but all the time. When you seek the Lord, God said he'll be found of you. When he's found of you, God will answer you according to his will. That's the word of God. So seek God. Get back to the place of consecration. Get back to the place of prayer. Get back to the place of laboring on your, on your face before God. And allow him to pour into you the oil of joy, the anointing, to fill your heart up with a refreshing, to inspire and edify and build you up in your faith, to turn your heart back to the Father. And when you do that, I guarantee God will give you a rhema word which is a spoken word from God himself that will help change your life, shaping your destiny and your future in the direction that he has ordained to be in your life. Stay encouraged, people of God. Don't quit. Don't give up. But allow the Spirit of God to flood your heart today with such peace, that surpasses all comprehension with such joy to take away the spirit of heaviness, a garment of praise instead of mourning, that you will rejoice in the Lord your God and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Stay excited about Jesus. And know that he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, and so do I. Tune in tonight at 6 o'clock as we go into our study tonight about the strong man. Again, we're dealing with the strong man, the spirit of whoredom, the spirit of whoredom. And I guarantee that God will speak something that will help, help you think and examine your own heart. To see where you are in your faith in God. May you have an awesome and a wonderful and exciting day in the Lord. Shalom.